What is up YouTube? Welcome back guys. I know it's been a while since you've seen my face. Just been busy. Holiday, sickness, life, trimming gel, all that good stuff, right? But we're back now. So today I want to do an informative style video. I wanted to go over a topic that I've been getting asked pretty frequently as of recently in my Instagram DMs and that is how do you or can you recycle or reuse or repurpose the water that comes, you know, your runoff water, your condensate from your AC units or the collection water from your dehumidifier, the condensate from that as well. Uh, a lot of people say you can't do it, says it's issues, says you're gonna get heavy metal, says this, that, and the other. We're gonna go over it today. I'm gonna tell you what possible concerns, things that you may need to look out for, what things you can do to prevent it and just give yourself that additional peace of mind. And I'm gonna show you my personal setup. Maybe you can take some you know, bits and bobs from it and build your own type of thing. You know, Recycle the water, save the earth, save yourself some cash. It's all good, right? So just to get right into it, the issues that people say that they've had or that could be a possibility is boils down to two things. Thing number one is going to be heavy metals. So and that's going to be in the form of generally I'm assuming copper or aluminum since both uh, devices, I'll flip around and show you. Both devices, whether it be your AC unit, I have a mini split AC unit, or your dehumidifier, there's metal coils inside of these that collect the water that the water collects on, then runs off, and then comes down your tubes. Because it's running across those metal coils, um, there's a fear that they will bring heavy metals with them down the lines into your collection bin, and then you would feed that to your plant, end up in your soil, and that will end up in your plants. And then it'll end up in your flowers, fruits, whatever you may be using it for. Um, I personally don't think this is gonna be an issue, and I haven't read anything saying it to be an issue. Yes, it may take heavy metals down into the water. I do believe that is valid. But you have to think about it, if your plants are growing outside, for example, or in soil, all soil has heavy metals, right? That's why hard water usually is groundwater sometimes, because it's, you know, it's collecting the heavy metals from the ground, from the soil. So I believe it's everywhere. I don't think there's going to be any issues with that taking up into your plants, unless it's just some extremely high amount, or if it's actually on the flowers themselves, like the water got on it. I can see that. But just to give yourself some peace of mind, and I do this as well, so even though I don't think it'll be an issue, what I do to remedy that is I run a small boy hydrologic uh, filter. So in a nutshell, my water comes down, you know, my AC unit just drips via gravity right into my collection recycle bin and my 70 pint dehumidifier auto pumps when it's full, 70 pints is uh, three gallons, I'm not really sure the conversion there, to that little skinny tube down and pumps down into here. Once it's into here, what I do is I have a pump down here right here there. this pump hooks to my because it's just a hose fitting hooks to my hydrologic filter pumps through here this is a sediment and carbon filter the sediment filter is temporarily out I'm going to be changing it but that's what's normally in here it looks just like this right here that's the one I took out so uh, as far as I'm aware of, the sediment filter really doesn't do much in this scenario, but everything that I've read does say that a carbon filter will remove heavy metals from the water. So as just an extra precaution and to give myself a little peace of mind and maybe to give you some peace of mind as well, you can run it through this carbon filter and, you know, or both filters and remove any possibility of heavy metals in there. I've actually done it without running it through this and I didn't have any issues. I've done lab testing with heavy metals and I, nothing came up. Uh, but once again, you know, I haven't tested everybody's water. Maybe if you have super harsh water um, or, you know, maybe you're collecting a lot off of your coils, maybe older coils, you know, whatever it may be, maybe, maybe it's worse and it is a possibility just to give you peace of mind. That's your solution. Use a carbon filter, run it through there. I will give you a little tidbit on a personal note. Make sure that the, the pump that you're using is strong enough built, like it's meant for high pressure, because you got to think when it's pushing through this, a lot of them are just meant to push through hoses. There's not a lot of resistance, right? This is, takes a lot of pressure to push through the tiny hose and through the filters and then back through a tiny hose. So make sure you get yourself a good solid pump that's meant for that kind of thing. Otherwise, you're gonna be burning out your pumps and resend them to Amazon within a month and telling them you know, it showed up that way. <laughs> but that's how you solve problem number one. Problem number two. Uh, and this is much more of a concern and I would take this one a little bit more seriously and that is the possibility of mold, fungus, bacteria, whatever, right? And that is in the form of it, in it collecting within these runoff lines because they're moist all of the time. Bacteria, mold, fungal, whatever it is can build up within those 
within these lines and then end up in your tank or build up within your tank itself. So there's a couple ways you can do to prevent this as well. Uh, thing number one, the most obvious is clean your lines. In between each run, I clean these lines. If you want to replace them entirely, you can do that as well. This line is actually very difficult for me to switch out. Um, this one, not so much, pretty easy. But what I do is I will actually soak this line when I remove it in like a bleach solution or a hypochlorous acid and water solution. Um, hypochlorous acid is 10 times stronger than bleach without being corrosive. Look it up, it's actually pretty useful. But you can use whatever you use for your disinfectant, right? You can soak your lines, clean it out, push the water through. I actually put in this and fill it up the whole full 70 pints and run the disinfectant through the line so I know that the entire line's pumped clean and then I'll run you know, clean water through it afterwards to make sure there's not disinfectant in there. What I also do in addition to cleaning those out periodically between each run is I make sure that I add in a disinfectant in here because I don't want anything building within my tank. And I actually use hypochlorous acid for this. I buy it in big jugs off Amazon. Uh, links in the description if you guys want to see what it is. It's like a gallon for 20 bucks. It's really cheap. So that helps me keep this disinfected. And I'll add that in periodically whenever it gets full before I use it. So that way I know all of this is clean and disinfected. So clean and disinfect your lines clean and disinfect your storage tank. And then when it pumps through all this and it ends up in my batch tank, which is where I mix my nutrients, I also get disinfectant in here as well. I do that in the form of cleanse via, you know, from Athena, which once again is hypochlorous acid. So that also goes in here and dis disinfects it a little further. So that, that one's more of a concern because you do not want to get root rot or mold and all that in your, you know, your root zone. That is much more of a concern than the heavy metals in my opinion. But once again, for peace of mind, I take precautions for both things to be as safe as possible. Do you need to do all this? Probably not. You could probably get away with it. I've had people tell me they've used it with zero issues, but I'd rather be safe than sorry because all you need is that one time for it to mess up, rot out your entire grow and your you know, months of work down over drain. So I, I'd rather be safe than sorry, and this is what I do. You can take these some of the precautions, all the precautions, but either way, the big takeaway here is you can recycle, you can repurpose your water safely and effectively. You can save water, you know, go green, planet earth all that good stuff right save yourself on your water bill because you're not doing it plus why just pour water down the drain we can use this i actually when it's in mid flower peak flower and there's the most moisture in this room you know it's able to draw it all out especially if it rains outside and moisture kind of gets in the room i can stay fully sufficient in here usually for weeks on end and just keep recycling the water that the plants are releasing collect goes back in it's fantastic so I would save myself from hauling a bunch of RO water in here or buying RO filters because the water is so clean already that these filters are very, very rarely replaced. I've actually never had to replace the carbon filter and I'm like two and a half runs. I think I started at yeah, two and a half runs deep when I did this. And this sediment I did have to because it kind of got like a pink slime on it, which I guess is... Uh, something in the water I should have disinfected better, I guess. I don't know. But I replaced it just in case because it was slowing down the flow rate. Uh, so that's the only one I've replaced so far. I clean everything out. Right now my room's teared down because I have been trimming. So I'm about ready to clean this. Thought it was a good time to make the video. I'm gonna clean this as well. I actually have both of these soaking with disinfectant in the water just to get an extra clean soak before I start doing a scrub, flush and all that. I'm gonna take these out of the room, take off my, my lines. And what I'll do also, because here's my irrigation lines, is once this is all cleaned out, I will actually pump disinfectant through all my irrigation lines and onto my trays, you know, to test it. And then I will go through with, you know, regular RO water to flush that out. And if you guys notice here, this is from the last harvest. No one's seen this yet. We haven't got the labs back, but as you can tell, we did, we did all right for ourselves. We're doing, we don't got the exact weights yet. I, already, I don't want to say any guesses, but so for you that stuck, stuck around to the end of this, you guys stay tuned to the next video. We're gonna go over the weights, the labs and everything. It'll be exciting. But that's it. I wanted to end it here before I start rambling too much. That's how you guys can recycle and repurpose your water. It's very efficient. It's very effective. It saves you some time from having to lug water in. Plus, why not save water if you can, right? Be a little, you know, be a little helpful. Go green, save planner, all that good stuff. Whatever your reasons are, you can do it. So as always, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it here and say peace out, YouTube, and happy growing. The rest of my life, see, I'm in love with Mary Jane. I'm going to make her wife, yeah, yeah.